So, many decisions to be made here. They depend a lot on your project, your scope, your money, and this will be one of the places where you are really defining the power of your evaluation. So, you may want to go to the actual context. We said that that was brilliant, because you're doing on the real place with the real level of noise, of distractions, the real materials, the real applications, the real hardware. So, that's always very desirable, because it will be more authentic. However, you are out of your depth, you're not at home. If you need to record that and maybe do some screen capture and you need good materials and you need a lot of people observing, for example, we will discuss about observers a bit later on, it's actually very hard to do that away from your place, from your controlled environment. So, on the other hand, if you do the evaluation at on-site on your own office, it's always easier or in your own ground. So, less authentic but more controllable. That's a balance. Um, you also want in a real project and in your own projects as many people as possible to see the experience live. Not to watch the video later on, but to actually see the user trying to interact. There's a reason for this. Um, developers and designers, we tend to be very passionate about our ideas and it's like, oh, but this button is in fact so obvious. And it doesn't matter that they tell us that the users are not finding our beloved uh, button as it is to see a user actually suffer in front of our system because he or she is not finding the button. So this is a humbling experience that as many people from the research team should go through as possible. So you want the entire thing, uh, team watching. However, again, this is a game of balances. If you have like a 20 people development project and you have a user and you have like 20 guys looking on top of your shoulder, that's going to make the user slightly uneasy or <coughs> freak out, actually. Uh, so that's necess not necessarily good. You, again, want to achieve some balance there. And you also want to figure out whether there's going to be a single moderator or a set of moderators, whether any developer can speak or only one pe person is allowed to speak. You need to figure those out. And Maybe it's a good yes. idea to have like, two uh, moderators and they divide the work, like one part of the evaluation and the other. <coughs> yeah, I'm actually going to go through that. Uh, but just I will just cut ahead. It's very nice to have two moderators, one who is actually engaging with the user and one who is just like taking notes and, and noting and maybe taking shifts. Many options. We'll discuss a bit, a bit of these later on. So, again, testing on actual context. I went through this. Uh, I will not go through this again. Okay, just more authentic. Yes, but it's it's also cheaper because you're not doing this at home. But it's complicated from a logistic perspective, and you may get a lot of interruptions. And testing on your own developer uh, facilities, it's just the opposite. Um, now, let's assume that this is under your control. Let's assume that you, we are speaking about developer facilities or that you really are in control of the setting. What do you want to have? How do you, do you want to arrange your room? There is actually textbooks on how to create rooms for evaluations. And if you do have enough money, you can really go overboard and create a dramatically interesting place for, for this. But at minimum, what you typically need is a computer for the user. Well, maybe it's a phone or a tablet if this is a mobile app. Some instruments for recording and some space for the observers to participate. So observers are anyone from the development team that is not directly engaging with the user, that is not being the moderator or not taking a moderating role. He's just standing back, observing and taking notes and freaking the user out. And you could work out something like this. You could have, okay, so here's going to be my participant in front of the PC. The moderator is going to be here, kind of closer to the user and helping, being the friendly type of person that is helping the user. And we have the observers here in the back, just looking, taking some notes, but being very quiet and not disturbing. That's a very basic and interesting uh, type of room. I have a question here. Isn't this kind of like advertising? Yes, we're actually going to end up 
there with the glass and the people behind it. It's the same kind of principle and it's built on the same principles. What you're doing here are user studies on how they react to the system. You're looking at different things, not at purchase decision, but rather usability of your product, but it's the same type of thing, yes. But it's going to look like that a lot. But the role of the moderator is not giving tips how to, on how to use the product, right? Mm -hmm. Just so. But the thing is, um, so I'm, I'm going to go there. This is, a, this is another of the balances that you have to seek. So the moderator is going to need to have some level of engagement with the user. At the very least, we are going to be asking the user to be speaking out loud. That's more on that in a couple of minutes. And it's far easier for a user to speak out loud if there is like one guy that he feels like he's speaking to rather than the empty room. So it does help, it may help actually, to have the moderator sitting uh, nearby. Uh, you may not want to do that. You may want to have the moderator entirely removed from the equation and not even be nearby, just someone who is in a different room. And that will just influence how you are arranging your room. You may want to actually remove the moderator from the user's ear so that the user feels at ease. It depends on your users, it depends on your moderators and how intensely you want the moderator to participate. So you may want to remove him or her from the equation and just bring him further, just as you were saying. Or if you have a large development team, you may want to go larger. You may want to go to a design such as this. How do you like that design? Yeah, huh? this is crazy for your regular use. I mean, this guy is here, like in front of everyone, is like, like a rat in a maze. It's very bad for the user. This user is not going to be at ease. It feels like there's an entire board of people examining him. Uh, there's public anxiety, all that stuff, bad idea. But you do actually have projects where you want 20 people to watch the experience live. So what do you do? You take them somewhere else. And this was, a. Uh, Pablo's room design, like you have your participant with the moderator nearby, so he's just feeling like there is a one person uh, there, and you may have an observation room, and you have maybe another moderator or not in the other room, and you have this separated, and you have like this larger chair with everyone observing. Same thing as the previous one, but not as aggressive. Of course, this is hardcore material. I mean, you need to have your building adapted to this, and you will not reasonably have a building that you can adapt to this kind of thing. Uh, yes? Is that for the placement in the observation room? The yes, for the M&Ms. <laughs> this is a small product placement. I'm still waiting for my tip from, from I mean, Nestle or whatever company that owns the M&M brand. Yeah. And since there is new technology, actually you do not need to have like a one-way mirror, which is also kind of freaky. I mean, if you're recording this on a laptop, there is this thing called the internet, so the room with the observers may be somewhere else. Uh, you do not need an actual glass between the two rooms. Even these, anyway, it's like way over the top. This is a lot. You typically will not have the resources to do this. Of course, if you have a 20-man research uh, development team, Maybe you do have a lot of money for your product. So up to you. It depends a lot of, on your context. Options. Again, I'm not going to be asking in an exam or you guys about room designs. I want you just to give a feeling of that you have like very, very small research approaches for small teams in small projects. And you have companies that really go overboard and have specific rooms designed for these. That's the range that I want you to understand. Uh, for your projects, for your 99% of the development projects out there, even if you do have the money and resources for usability testing, most of the time it will be enough of having a laptop with a webcam, with some software to record the webcam, some software to record the screen, and the prototype that you want to evaluate. And you put all that in a laptop and you're done, you're good. Speaking of product placements, ScreenFlow, I still haven't managed through all these years to have uh, the ScreenFlow guys uh, give me a tip. I'm still not getting paid by them, but this is actually a very nice piece of software 
for, uh, for this type of thing. So what does it do? It records the screen, it records the webcam, and it creates, it records sound from the microphone, and then it gives you some facilities to just edit the video and have like here the screen, here the user, and just the video stream below. You can actually use this for free if you do not mind having like big, bold screen flow written on top of your video, but that's fine. I will not be thinking bad of you if you deliver a video with that. Uh, I am not aware of any clear-cut Windows alternative. This is Mac only, sorry guys. But anything that records your screen, your webcam, your audio, and you're good. You do not need anything else. Yes? What's the difference between ScreenFlow and OBS, which is like the de facto standard for capturing the screen? What's the...? Open Broadcaster software. It runs on like everything. Will that...? Uh, grab the three streams, um, like yeah. the screen, webcam, and the audio from the microphone. Yeah. If it does, then I mean, and audio from the from the computer. If it does the four of them, we're good. I wasn't aware of that, and it's perfectly fine. I'm just saying that any software that will capture the four things for you and combine them in one single video, and you're good to go. Mm -hmm. I will be looking that up. See if next year I can update the slides. It was OBS, Open Broadcasting. Okay, I'll look it up. I didn't, I wasn't aware of that. <laughs>